guys, what's going on? Robinson DUP. And today, we're going to talk about the most important topic, the most important muscle that everybody's concerned about, especially this guy in the gym. How to get big arms. I get asked this question all the time. Um, I don't think my arms are anything special. There are guys out there with much bigger arms than myself, but repeatedly on my social media all the time and in the gym I get asked, what do you do to get those arms? Um, it was even a common theme even when I was out at the Arnold. A lot of the YouTubers are like, God damn it, Robinson, your arms are huge. Now, I'm not an egomaniac. I don't think I have that great of arms. But anyway, here are going to be some of my suggestions to you. A lot of the main concerns that I have with people doing biceps is everybody wants to do a whole ton of weight, but not a whole lot of range of motion. Um, this, this constant, like, more is better. And what I find out is a lot of guys just, they have no full range of motion. So what I'm talking about, and a lot of you probably do it and have seen guys who do this. So you'll be turned sideways, right? And you'll see guys doing this. Basically as they come forward, they bring their shoulders up. And then as they come down, they don't fully extend their arm. They swing it back. And it's, just, it's like this swing thing that constantly goes on, right? It's like this motion. So that's one of the most common and easiest mistakes to get rid of. The thing that I find, especially for my arms and most people who have trouble getting arm development, um, is, is the, the lack of the mind-muscle connection to take the muscle to full length and full contraction every time. So, if you're doing a dumbbell curl, for instance, as your, or even a barbell curl, but you got to remember that this is a hinge joint, right? So, instead of keeping your arm cocked and coming here and then back, which most people do, what you want to do is bring the arm fully up. If you can, supinate your pinky just a little bit to get that extra little bit of torque in there. And then bring your, your arm all the way down. So when your arm's all the way down, you should almost have a flex. Pretty much your arm should be straight in a flex tricep. Now I'm not saying you have to lock your arm, but you should bring it all the way down, all the way up. This is the whole range of motion from here to here. All right? Now, can you work in certain partial ranges of motions, like doing things like 21s and stuff like that? Absolutely. I don't think partial ranges of motions are bad. I think partial ranges of motions are bad when they're the only thing you're using and you're not ever using the full range of motion. So I'll see guys who are doing curls like this, you know, cable curls and stuff, but their arm never comes down. It never fully extends. And also, if you're not strong enough to get the weight up without having to bring your shoulder into it, there's a problem. So my concerns are this. One, there shouldn't really be any swinging. Now, if you're doing it for a couple little cheat reps at the end, that's one thing. Um, so if you're swinging the weight up and then using the negative on the way down real strict, that's okay. But if it's just, you know, it's a lot of just hip thrust and swinging of arms, you're not really accomplishing much for your bicep. Now, besides full range of motion, I don't find doing things in sets of three to five make any sense for arms. Okay, they're a small muscle group. I, I don't foresee the need for that. Could you do that? Sure. Are there guys out there who probably can do like, you know, sets of five and their arms get bigger? Great. For me, I find that higher rep sets work great, better for arms, at least on my uh, my experience with some of my clients as well as with myself. So I'm looking at anything from like 8 to 20 reps. Um, I may add drop sets. I don't overuse them. I'll use them here and there for fun. Um, you know, as, as a finisher, um, I have done like back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back drop sets where I'll start with like a 70-pound easy curl bar, 50-pound easy curl bar, 30-pound easy curl bar, and then even go all the way to 10-pound dumbbells and do hammer curls. Those are all interesting techniques to use, but the main thing is no matter whether you're doing drop sets, normal sets, anything like that. Once again, full range of motion is, is completely important here. And really focusing on, not just you know going up and down, but as you're coming up, make sure that you're getting a full contraction in the bicep. You don't wanna just drop and then come up and drop and come up. You really wanna get that mind-muscle connection to get this to flex, um, to get that muscle activation, okay? You should be able to squeeze the crap out of your bicep whether you're doing just bare weight, like without any weight like this, or whether you have 80 pounds in here, it should be the same thing. Force the contraction as much as possible. And then don't drop the weight on the way down. The negative is just as important as, as, the, um, as the positive, okay? So up, squeeze, down, full extension, but don't just drop it. Now, for those of you who may have, uh, you know, your arms might take a little longer to progress. Like, so for instance, my legs take longer for, my, for me to progress than my upper body. I would suggest hitting arms with frequency. I wouldn't necessarily suggest an arm day. I think arm days are overblown. Can you make progression there? Yeah. Are the people who are successful despite of themselves doing this? Absolutely. But for people who have weak points, I always suggest frequency over just one day of volume. So what do I mean by that? 
If you have like a day where you're working your chest or your back, I would suggest working in maybe two to three sets of something like eight or two to three sets of something like 15 to 20 or something like that on those specific days to hit things like your biceps or your triceps. That's one thing. You could also maybe do you know your usual compound maneuvers or your big chest and back days with those arm accessory work and then maybe later in the week since it's a smaller muscle group fit in more of an arm day or more arm focus if you want if it makes you feel better or if you just like doing that to help bring your arms up. The other thing is you may want to try different angles, uh, different time under tension um, and things like that to get your muscle to be more developed because you got to remember the biceps got two heads, triceps got three. So you might want to try different angles and everything to make sure you're hitting both heads of the bicep or all three heads of the tricep. So instead of just doing you know, barbell curls or dumbbell curls, you might want to add in things like hammer curls. You may want to add in things like French curls. You may also want to add things like time under tension where you're going with a lighter weight, but you're counting three to five seconds on the way up and three to five seconds on the way down. These are all things that will progressively overload your biceps and your triceps to increase your overall arm size. And the rest of it, guys, is just repetition and patience. Hope it was informative. Talk to you guys later.